Republican presidential candidates are jockeying for position ahead of the first debate. Just five days away, there are 17 candidates, but only the top 10 will make the cut. Several contenders polling near the cutoff are on an all-out media blitz trying to raise their visibility to voters. Donald Trump continues to lead the field, followed closely by Scott Walker and Jeb Bush. Will those who miss the debate see their campaigns crumble? Deneen Borelli is a Fox News contributor and David Goodfriend is former Deputy Staff Secretary to President Bill Clinton. Thank you both for joining us this afternoon. Hi, Kelly. Thank you. So let me get right to it. Uh, Mark Jones, a political science fellow at the Baker Institute at Rice University in Houston, says the field of Republican candidates is just too big. Because of that, he describes the first debate of the season as, quote, culling of the herd. Deneen and David, how do you square with that? How do you describe the first debate, which will be featured, featuring 10 of the 17 candidates? Well, I think it's uh, going to be, uh, for me, it's going to be exciting, and I think it's very important for the candidates and also for the country to witness and hear this first debate, Kelly. Uh, I think we already know who the, the top eight will be on the main stage, and basically it's up to maybe the three governors to fight for the other two positions, Kasich, Perry, and uh, Christy. And so I, I'm looking forward to the debate. Um, I want to hear what the policies are and what they, these individuals plan to do for our country to turn things around. And uh, I know it's a big field, but I think that's even better because it's more for folks to look at where people stand and the different individuals we have to choose from. David, is the culling of the herd or a shootout at OK Corral? Well, it'll certainly be entertaining. I think uh, it's not make or break for the candidates who, who don't get on. I think there's a lot of grassroots activity in both New Hampshire and Iowa, some of the other early primary states, but certainly it's important. What, what I think is more important to me as a Democrat, and I think this is true of independents as well, is will we see significant differences in policy and opinions between these candidates? A lot of us Democrats see a lot uh, similarities between these candidates on immigration, on LGBT rights, on voting rights, on uh, middle class economic issues. I want to see if they'll differentiate themselves and that's a big question going into this. My hunch is that we won't see very much differentiation as far as the general public is concerned. They'll be jockeying for who appeals most to the Republican base and that's a fairly narrow playing field. Well, uh, Deneen, uh, let's talk about that, because if you're looking at this kind of debate that's going on here on Fox, you know that Megyn Kelly and Brett Baer will be asking and posing the kinds of questions that will delve into all types of issues, trying to get the candidates to stay on point about the issues. And because of that, we might hear a lot that we haven't heard heretofore because of Donald Trump, the big person in the room who's leading everyone and has kind of taken the sail out of the wind or the wind out of the sails for those other candidates. Sure. Well, listen, I, I think all of us want to hear where everyone stands on policies. And we have to keep in mind that Americans are very concerned about the economy, concerned about jobs, national security, look at what ISIS is doing, and, and looking at the, the spending and the debt that our country has incurred. Uh, illegal immigration. These are the really big issues that people are concerned about. And yes, we do want to hear where they stand. And it will be important for them to stay on point and to deliver that message because they really do need to differentiate themselves away from the pack. As you mentioned, Donald Trump, he's dominating in the polls and he's uh, making a lot of news. Well, well, and so while you're how talking about everyone? that, let, let me, let me, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you know, sure. I'm running out of time. But Donald Trump yeah. still, as you said, holds the lead in the polls. Do you have any idea what he will say or any advice? Advice on what he should be saying during the debate. Uh, if you're asking me, or yes, sure. Uh, well, I think he should stay on point, should not be so bombastic, and to provide Americans where he specifically stands on policies, because I don't think we really know that at this point. Could could I jump in with something? Yes, David, here? I was going to give you a final word. Please go ahead. Well, I took a look at the polling results on RealClearPolitics.com that averages a bunch of polls. Here's a very interesting pattern. In a matchup with Hillary Clinton, she beats all the top Republicans, but she beats Bush by about four points, Walker by about six points, but Trump by about 15 points. In other words, the most popular Republican candidate right now polls worst in a general election matchup against Hillary, and I think that's fascinating. It means that the Republican core base of the party is pulling out a candidate to lead that actually doesn't fare very well in the general, and I think that's a problem for Republicans. David. Well, I, I, and, oh, go ahead. 
Denise, we got to we got to leave it there. Sure. I, I know you have a lot more to say, Denise Borelli. <laughs> I'm sure we have a lot of time to talk between now and and what takes place. Yeah. Uh, David, good friend, Denise Borelli. Thank you very much.